The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisors Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, welcome everyone to this week's version of the <laughs> the Mayors and Supervisors Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honeyoy Falls, Lima Sentinel, and each week we bring you the goings-on in the villages and towns in the areas that we cover. Today we'll start with Mike Falk in the town of Lima. Mike, how are we doing in Lima? Things are going well here, Chris. Thanks for hosting. Uh, the Lima Public Library is going to be one of the points where you can drop off your uh, interval Ukraine relief uh, items, which are very limited. Uh, only sleeping bags, socks and underwear, baby diapers and wipes, adult diapers, feminine hygiene products, toothbrushes, and medical gloves. Anything outside of that is not gonna be able to be accepted by the organization. Uh, the Lima Public Library, their hours are online. Uh, you may drop them off at will anytime between March 3rd and 10th. Uh, in Livingston County right now, it is uh, Main Streets Go Blue. And so that is to promote uh, the uh, getting screened for colorectal cancer. Uh, colorectal cancer is the uh, second leading uh, cancer killer in New York State. And so it's at this time every year that uh, we uh, hang blue balloons and put out uh, all kinds of banners and streamers and press releases to encourage people to go ahead and get screened. If you're 45 and you've got a low risk, you can do a mail-in sort of screening. Uh, if you're 50 and over, a colonoscopy may be the correct thing. Uh, as a 16-year colorectal cancer survivor, who's had upwards of seven colonoscopies now, uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and get one. Uh, the treatment is far worse than going and getting the colonoscopy. Uh, Livingston County and Wyoming County are pleased to announce a partnership that has reopened the dialysis center in Mount Morris. Uh, now we're able to offer the full dialysis clinic right there at the Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation Services. Um, the uh, easiest way to uh, get access to the service is to call the CNR in Mount Morris, uh, right on the Livingston County website, Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation. And if you are someone in need of a dialysis place that is uh, a little bit closer, uh, that may be a great fit for you. If you are a Livingston County resident, ages 14 to 20, uh, the uh, Livingston County uh, Youth Employment Program has opened up for applications. Uh, the jobs range all over the board from uh, picking berries, office work, uh, playground rehab, uh, working with animals, all kinds of things that are there. Uh, these positions are uh, fully funded by uh, grant money that the county has received. So, uh, please go ahead and apply. Uh, the employers who are sponsoring do not actually have to pay your expenses. So it, it's kind of a win-win. You get uh, sort of a free intern and uh, the young folks get experience. I uh, swing by the town hall here, right outside the clerk's office. Uh, you can uh, scan for the application or go to the uh, employment area on the Livingston County website. Uh, public comment is open for the Stone Falls Road Bridge Project uh, down in Dansville. Uh, that is going to get replaced. Uh, it is a uh, semi-wooden bridge, and so uh, the county is looking for public comment. And that's all I've got, Chris. Okay, thanks, Mike. Now it's Jerry's turn. Jerry, what's happening in Rush? Well, we're waiting for the warm weather to settle in, Chris. I don't know who's cornering it, but we hope they, they release it and it comes to rush. Um, I'm working from home today because 
the national grid had to replace a couple of transformers that directly power our town hall. So uh, the power is back on, came on about an hour ago, but I decided to stay home and wait for this broadcast so I could participate. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited because uh, related to that, uh, we have received a notice of a successful grant funding to add EV charging stations to our town hall parking lot. I, uh, I've been an electric car owner for six years, but I never wanted to pursue it because I was afraid of the perception of the people if I pursued it but it was pursued by others and the pursuit was successful. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, also, our, I think I mentioned this before, uh, our finance director resigned and moved back to New York City, but we reached an agreement today with a EFPR firm who does municipal uh, outsourcing for finance, and we are entering into an agreement with them. And I like what they showed us, and it should make all of our lives much easier and make our record keeping much easier to understand. Also wanted to mention that uh, virus te test kits are now available at the Rushtown Library. There are some at the Rushtown Clerk's Office. So wherever people go, the library or the town clerk's office, they should be able to get their test kits. Um, also wanted to say that the Rushtown Board approved a resolution for the 10% uh, reduction in assessment for active firemen and emergency medical personnel. Uh, I'm excited about that because it's been a long time in coming. Uh, we have not done a lot to show our appreciation for the firemen and emergency personnel other than attend their carnival every year, but I think this will make a big difference and this should send a signal to them how much we appreciate them because we really do. And at this point, we plan on having a fireman's parade this year and we plan on having a Memorial Day event at the Memorial Veterans Memorial uh, right across from the Creekside in, I don't believe we're gonna have a Veterans Memorial Day Parade. Um, the organizers of that tell me they're getting too old. And I said, I can relate. So we will have an event, but we won't have a parade. And I believe that's about all I got to share with you, except even though it's cold here, Rush is the best kept secret in Western New York. There we go. All right, Jerry, thanks. Eileen, Village of Scottsville, how are we doing there? Hope oh, you're muted. There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, things have been pretty quiet this week. So I just have a couple of um, items to bring up. First of all, I need the most important item is that the there's a public hearing to consider approval of the proposed 2022-2023 village budget. The public hearing will be held at the regular village board meeting this Tuesday, March 8th at 6 the meeting is at 6:30 p.m. and the budget hearing is at seven o'clock. Uh, let's see, the pro in that upcoming budget, the property tax levy is up 1.06%. 
but with reassessments, the whole total tax rate per thousand is down 0.3056%. So moving on, uh, we also have COVID rapid test kits available at the village office. Just stop down at the office and you can pick them up. Um, and a reminder, uh, the village general election is this, is this the following Tuesday, March 15th at the municipal building and voting hours are uh, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. So everyone make sure you get out there and vote. And since it's been such a quiet week, that's it for us. All right. Have a good week. Thanks, Eileen. We want to remind everyone there's also a village election in the village of Lima. So if you're watching this, be sure to vote on that. It's the same day, right, Mike? March 15th, as far as you know? Yep. Okay, good. Speaking of villages, we've got another one to cover. Village of Honeyland Falls, Rick Millen. And Rick, also share anything you might know from the county, Monroe County. Take it away. Well, it's great to, uh, great to see everyone again today. Uh, we are happy to announce the launch of our new website. Um, still at the same website address, www.villageofhoneyoyfalls.org. Um, but we do have a new website. We're excited about it. It is going to be um, very much e uh, a lot easier to navigate and will be much easier to update internally. So we're excited about that. Um, the village has also come to an agreement with CGI Digital to create a series of promotional educational videos highlighting what we have to offer our residents, visitors, and businesses in Honeyway Falls. We're going to focus on our quality of life and area attractions, our great school districts, our fantastic religious entities, economic development opportunities, like our Shovel Ready site here in the village, and much more. Um, this will roll out this coming summer and should be very positive for our community. Uh, the village also, as uh, Jerry and um, Mayor Hansen have talked about, uh, we have received uh, COVID-19 at-home test kits from the county as well. We have been providing them to our local businesses to hand out to their employees and their families. Uh, we've also provided them to our local churches. Uh, even a couple of the churches in Lima have picked some up um, to hand out to their parishioners. So we're happy about that. If any of our local businesses uh, still need them, they may reach out to us and we'll provide what we can. And then beginning Monday, March 7th, um, local residents may stop by the village office as well and ask for them. And we will hand them out uh, as, as many as needed until uh, these are gone. So uh, we're happy to be able to do that. We know, you know, people aren't using them as much now, uh, which is a positive thing, but we were happy to get them and be able to hand them out. So if anyone needs them, stop by the village office. Uh, our office uh, hours are normally 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And um, last week we talked a little bit more about the uh, two public hearings we had for our village board meetings. Um, we also passed, as Jerry said, uh, the 10% um, property tax exemption for emergency services members. We're happy to have that done. And we're also going to continue to look into working with the county and potentially the state. Um, so some ways to enhance um, that legislation, because as, as we've talked, uh, the legislation that was put forward was uh, uh, pretty broad. And it's, it's been very confusing for our assessors, for the towns, villages, and school districts, um, you know, who's considered an active member, et cetera. So we're going to try to work on clarifying that a little bit more um, so that we're all following the same rules, if you will. Um, but we're happy to have the initial law passed. Our comprehensive plan update was also passed. Uh, we had great dialogue on that. Appreciate everyone's efforts. And um, lastly, we are also, uh, like some of our other villages, we're in full budget mode right now. We're enjoying our weekly budget workshops. They're always uh, exciting to attend, um, but we look forward to having our budget approved uh, and ready to go for our March monthly meeting where we'll discuss that and make sure that we have everything in line 
And then our public hearing for the uh, approval, the formal approval, will be the first week in April. So we're looking forward to that. And um, that's it for the Village of Honeyway Falls this week. All right. Thanks, Rick. John's back from vacation. John, how did everything go in Menden while you were gone? I would like to report that the uh, deputy town supervisor, former uh, town clerk, James Mursky, did a terrific job while I was gone. He, uh, he, 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 he definitely uh, had plenty of experience at town hall to handle anything that came down the pipe. So uh, once again, uh, happy to be here. Um, happy to get out, out of, quite frankly, out of the weather for a week. And uh, I did want to talk about a couple of things today. One being that, that uh, you may have seen on one of our uh, uh, Rochester news stations that they reported that we had uh, two of our highway trucks down, and which it was the case. And the reason that they have been down uh, for the last couple of weeks is because we can't get parts. Um, so uh, credit to our highway uh, superintendent and our highway uh, uh, crew is that they, uh, these last couple of weather events, they've been able to keep up. But I was able to gather a little bit of information that the town of Menden has uh, 237 lane miles that we plow and salt. That includes town, county, and state roads. So we normally have five trucks on the road and uh, each truck does, uh, or I'm sorry, six trucks on the road, excuse me. And each truck does about 40 miles. So it does take them a little while to get around. And hopefully now that we're into March, they're not out uh, plowing and salting as much, but we all have seen uh, a couple of years ago, we were handing out test kits at the Menden Firehouse on May 11th and it snowed. So uh, uh, we're, we're, <laughs> We're, uh, we're expecting uh, any kind of weather in March as we've seen. So when we've been down uh, two trucks, that puts us down to five trucks total. And uh, that increases the, uh, uh, each, each truck does 50 miles, takes them a little bit longer to get around, that type of thing. But uh, we did get word that uh, the parts have come in for one of the trucks. So uh, uh, hopefully that'll be back on the road soon. We do have seven trucks all together. The reason we do have seven trucks is, is precisely because when something does go down, we have an extra truck. And when we really get the heavy snows, uh, the highway superintendent puts that seventh truck out on the state roads to uh, uh, basically double duty the state roads to keep them clear. So during this time, he's been using a couple of the town uh, pickup trucks type vehicles, uh, smaller vehicles to do some of the tracks some of the cul-de-sacs to uh, keep those big trucks out on the main road. So like I say, I appreciate uh, all our hard work from our highway superintendent and our uh, crew at the highway department. Uh, let's see, we will be uh, having a bid opening on March 8th, 10 o'clock at Town Hall for the uh, Military Memorial and Splash Park. Uh, we are anxiously awaiting opening those bids. And uh, our next town board meeting will be on March 14th. Uh, all of our town board meetings, planning board and zoning board meetings are at the community center on North Main Street, County I Falls. Uh, we uh, scheduled all those due to COVID. And speaking of COVID, like everyone else has mentioned, we have test kits at town hall and uh, they were provided by the county. We were out for an extended period of time, but we recently received them and uh, stop by town hall if you'd like any test kits. We have uh, plenty, so stop by. And if anybody needs some and can't get here during regular business hours, please contact me and we'll make arrangements to get them to you. Uh, I was very pleased to hear that the governor uh, took the uh, zoning uh, changes out of the, the state budget, which I had reported at, at this, and the Sentinel uh, recently. Uh, that was of uh, very big concerns to myself and a lot of our residents as well. And uh, as I understand it, that's been taken out of the budget. So we're, uh, we're very happy about that. And we also are happy because some of the funding for uh, municipalities has been put back in that was taken out in recent years. So uh, uh, we're happy to see that come about. Bend and Green, which you've heard me talk about many, many times. And it's been uh, a project that's been on and off the front burner since uh, about 2005. 
is back uh, at the plan has been back at the planning board level recently and is about to go to the town board. It's a planned unit development on Route 64, just north of the throughway. Uh, the thing that I'd like to bring to our residents' uh, attention is that they want to tie into the sewers in the town of Pittsburgh. So this would be the first time we would have sewers in the town of Menden outside the village of Honey High Falls. It does set a precedence, and I want all of our residents to realize that and to take that under consideration. If you have any opinions, please feel free to contact me either by email, by phone, or uh, at the grocery store, gas station, or any place else I happen to run into you around town. So uh, once again, it's good to be back. And uh, I thought spring would be in full bloom by the time I got back, but apparently Mother Nature had some other plans. So <laughs> thanks for having me. Saturday's good. No, no, Sunday. One of the days is uh, supposed to be good. So let's see. Anybody else have anything that they forgot that they want to add? I'll bite in there. Okay. For those, of, for those of you who follow social media, you are no doubt uh, aware of a situation that we have in the town of Rush where a barn was built in the highway right-of-way. And uh, the only reason I bring it up is because those who have posted on social media are very, very critical of the town administration for the unfortunate position this property owner has put in has been put in with that barn. So I just wanna say, number one, the situation with the barn started before the current administration took their seats. It was because of a dereliction of duty on the part of a building inspector who is no longer with us. And uh, secondly, this is a part that nobody seems to know of, and that is the town of Rush, after my administration took over, offered to pay 100% to move that structure out of the highway right of way. And it was rejected by the owner and the owner's attorney. So, uh, we followed our attorney's advice at that point and turned it over to the state Supreme Court who ordered the barn to be moved. Unfortunately, uh, those facts aren't out, but you just heard them. And hopefully some of our listeners will hear them also because uh, I don't think any of us on the town board are boogeymen. And uh, we, we tried to help but our help was rejected. And that's very unfortunate. So I'll leave it with that. Thanks, Jerry. And don't forget, if you miss this on Sunday at one o'clock on our, either our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, you can read what Jerry just said in next week's paper. And maybe I'll put that in the headline for this section, Jerry, because that actually is uh, breaking news, so to speak. Yeah, since it hasn't been reported anywhere else. Yeah, we like that kind of stuff. Keep it coming, yeah. <laughs> All right, so thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening and watching tonight. Thank you for participating in today's show, and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.